For the past 15 years, I've been training myself to cook. As I've gotten better, I've learned that being a good cook goes well beyond knowing how to read and follow a recipe. Following recipes is a good place to start, but there are certain skills you have to learn to get some things right. The advent of the internet has significantly helped my cooking game, because now I can watch Gordon Ramsay or Alton Brown expertly dice an onion and then practice myself. This combination of read, observe, practice has improved my kitchen skills and resulted in a better results as I work through recipes. I'm starting to be a pretty good cook. The more I progress in the kitchen, though, the more I realize that there is a distinct difference between a good home cook, which I have started to become, and a good home chef, which I want to work towards becoming. To be a decent home chef, I need more than a book of recipes and some skills. I need to combine the content knowledge, practices, and reasoning process of the chef to start innovating in the kitchen. In a sense, I'm going to have to start over, making horrible dishes as I learn to com Find ingredients in different ways, processing the feedback from those dishes, and learning from that feedback. I'm going to have to learn how to create food as opposed to just preparing food. While looking in the refrigerator, Homer Simpson has been known to say, There is no food, just ingredients to make food. The cook opens the refrigerator, looking for the items on their recipes list. The chef opens the refrigerator and creates recipes based on what's there. Being a chef as opposed to a cook requires a certain type of creativity where knowledge of food is combined with practices and skills to make something unique to the moment and ingredients on hand. Where does that creativity come from? How do we learn it? Can we? How do we teach it? For me to become a home chef, there is a massive amount of content knowledge to be learned, such as what different ingredients taste like, smoke points of different oils, and even some really cool food science content, such as how collagen molecules contract or relax at various temperatures. Specific skills need to be mastered, such as sauteing, braising, chopping the onion I mentioned above, and even sharpening knives. I need to practice like the chef, which means I need to experiment with new flavor combinations and textures, and I need to accept that the practice of cooking can lead to some bad results from time to time, from which I can learn and grow. Finally, to become a decent home chef, I need to understand how the practices of the chef connect to the flavors. What's the reasoning that connects the doing with the knowing? What type of thinking does it take to connect knowledge about triglyceride melting points to the practice of preparing a moist and tender brisket? And how might I generalize this knowledge to figure out how to make this pork shoulder? That right there is the creativity. Thinking. You may be slightly confused by now. Aren't I an expert on science thinking? Why this detailed discussion about food? Am I just trying to make you hungry? How does thinking like a chef fit in with thinking like a scientist? I'm highlighting this process it takes to become a home chef because it's relatable, and it's the exact same process required to become a young scientist. In my book, Creating Scientists, I go into depth about what it takes to teach children science as a process, as opposed to a manual full of stuff to know. Is it our job to just teach science facts? Can we create great biologists by forcing students to memorize the parts of the cell? If the physical science student learns enough equations, are they then prepared to solve new challenges and make new discoveries? Is a chemist born the moment they've learned all of the elements of the periodic table? Are flashcards and memory tasks really a good way to excite the next generation about the practices of science? It turns out that we can't teach an aspiring chef how to make delicious food by merely having them recite the five basic tastes. Similarly, we can't teach an aspiring scientist how to discover by having them memorize the periodic table of the elements. Sure, that content knowledge is a necessary component, but it isn't sufficient for chef or scientist making. If we keep peeling the layers of the onion, we'll find that it goes deeper than that as well. Having good knife skills doesn't make a great chef. Having excellent mathematical ability doesn't make a great physicist or even a great mathematician. Skills and abilities are necessary, but often, again, they aren't sufficient. How can you understand cooking that goes beyond learning to follow a recipe or chopping onions? How can you understand science that goes beyond learning scientific facts or manipulating equations? Ultimately, it requires three things. Knowing, doing, and thinking. Knowing the content, doing the science practices, and combining it all with the reasoning of the scientist. It takes the synthesis of these three things to be a practicing chef or scientist. My first book, Creating Scientists, focused heavily on the knowing and doing. 
are the content knowledge and practices required of the scientist. My second book, Teaching Science Thinking, focuses on the thinking. Thinking is the glue that binds knowing and doing. Thinking is the creativity required to discover, whether we're talking about discovering new flavor combinations or what happens past the event horizon of a black hole. These are books about teaching your students how to think and therefore how to combine knowledge and practice to create.